fun to have toggle bits toggle bits audience in here okay so enlisting 7-eleven enlisting 7-eleven i'm hungry uh we bring the create front of house hosting module into the scope and call uh you know restaurant function so we only have to specify hosting add to wait list to call the add to wait list function in eat at restaurant <clears throat> Okay, so this is file name source lib rs. So we have mod front of house. Then within front of house, we have hosting. Within hosting, we have a function add to waitlist. Then we do use crates front of house hosting. So it's crates double double colon front of house double colon hosting. Then we have pub function hosting add to waitlist. Can you not just call add to waitlist? Um, okay, so this is a very trivial, um, I'm going to copy and paste here. I know that that's typically, um, not, uh, appreciated in chat, but this is, th this is a trivial mo uh, module example. And I already typed out all this. This is just triviality. I know no copy and paste, but this is a trivial example on top of what, something that we already did. Basically. Why did it, why did it do that? Oh no. There we go. Jeez, man. Set paste. Yeah, that, that's what I messed up. I was surprised that it didn't figure that out automatically. Yeah, set paste and set no paste. That's yeah. Heresy. Okay. So we have mod front of house, pub mod hosting, add to waitlist. And we need to do use create front of house hosting. Can you not just do this? Is what I'm wondering. Can you not just do that? One nice thing about them. Boom boom. Okay. Saved literally half a second there. I hope you guys saw it. Oh, so you can't. Okay. So you have to specify the most child thing first. Can you really not do this toggle bit? So if you say use crate front of house hosting, you still literally have to say hosting here. This has to be like that. You bring hosting. Oh, shoot. I just want to increase the font size. Oh, there we go. Um, you are only importing the module. You need to specify the function too. No, no, no. I'm saying, why do I need this though? Why do I need, I, this is a pub mod. I'm using this module, but then these functions should come in. Pocket watch. Wow. Welcome in Raiders. Today we are learning Rust. Pocket Watch, I haven't talked to you in a long time. How are you doing? How's your game going? Sometimes it takes people a minute to come in. How's it going, Pocket Watch? Let me know when you get in. Uh, although no expectation to stick around if you're, um, no expectation to stick around if you're trying to take off. But uh, yeah, I haven't talked to you in a while, Pocket Watch. I hope you're doing well. Uh, hope you're doing well. Hope your game is going well. Good to see you again. So yeah, hope uh, hope everybody in Toggle Bit, uh, sorry, Pocket Watch's chat is doing well. Today we are looking at some Rust docs, so we're learning Rust on stream. This is day six. If you want to, you can go back and look, uh, you can look at the other days. Today we're talking about modules, which is a little bit slower of a topic. But um, yeah, if you want to start from scratch, you can go back and watch all the VODs as well. So uh, let's see. You could glob it with hosting star, but don't do that. Okay, good to know. Also, yeah, Atomic Integer. Welcome into chat. Hope you're doing well. And yeah, talk a bit. Or, uh, why do I keep saying talk a bit? Pocket Watch. Thank you for the raid. Uh, I don't know why. Talk a bit, talk a bit, talk a bit. Everything's talk a bit today. <laughs> okay. Um, so this I don't like as much, but um, it's better than having to specify the whole thing. So whatever. I think it would make sense if you could just call the function. But then again, I'm used to see where like functions kind of just exist in this global space almost. Um, so yeah, seems fine. Yes. Okay. So adding use in the path is, uh, in a scope is similar to creating a symbolic link in the file system by adding use crate front of house hosting in a crate root. Hosting is now a valid name in that scope. Uh, just as though ho the hosting module had been defined in the crate root. paths brought into scope with the use also check privacy like any other paths. You can also bring an item into scope with the use, uh, with use and use a relative path as shown in listing 712. Um, shows how to use a relative path to get the same behavior uh, as in listing 7.11.
Uh, okay. Wait, so sorry. What's the difference between these two? 712. Bring a module into scope with the use... Oh, relative. So you can also use self here. But again, okay. So kind of, uh, you know, pedantic there. Okay. So in listing 711... Uh, so this is this is a subsection creating idiomatic uh, cre creating idiomatic use paths. In listing 711, you may have wondered why we specified use crates front of house hosting, and then called hosting add to waitlist in the eat at restaurants rather than specifying use path all the way out to the add to waitlist function to achieve the same result in listing 713. Oh, so you can do that. So you can do this though, add to waitlist if you want to. So then you can go here and do this. That does work. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So then we have, okay, so although both listings 7.11 and 7.13 accomplish the same task, 7.11 is the idiomatic way to bring a function to scope with the use. Bringing the function's parent module into the scope with the use uh, with use means that we have to specify the parent module when calling the function. Specifying the parent module when calling the function makes it clear that the function isn't locally defined while minimizing repetition of the full path. And code listing 7.13 is unclear as where add to waitlist is defined. Okay. So I'm assuming here you couldn't also have pub um, or just in general function add to waitlist. You couldn't do this. I would I would assume you cannot do this. Unused import. Could not compile restaurant due to previous errors. So the error is this one. Uh, oh yeah, unused. Oh, interesting. So it's using this by default. Imagine if you have, um, let's see, sorry. Talk a bit zero, talk a bit one, talk a bit zero, talk a bit one, yes. Um, imagine if you have two traits that have the same method defining in the same module. It would be inconvenient if you got both at the same time, especially if both are implemented for the same thing. I could see that being an issue. You redefine the function. Okay, so this then would have to go away. You cannot do this. This you cannot do. Because now this is unused. Cargo build, not builds. Although add to waitlist here is never used. This is never used now. Okay, so that makes sense. Uh, okay, so on the other hand, when bringing in structs, enums, and other items with use, it's idiomatic to specify the full path. Listing, jeez, oh my goodness gracious. All of the raids, thank you, Spyus. Spyus, what's going on? What's going on, dude? How was your stream? This is a late stream for you, isn't it? Must be pretty late. How's it going, Raiders? Welcome in. Decided to raid this nice guy. Wow, what a, what a nice message. Well, thank you for the nice message, Spyus. I appreciate it. How was your stream today, Spyus? I hope your stream went well. Today we're looking at modules in Rust. Which is interesting, to say the least. There's some interesting choices here. It's mostly good. I agree with most of this, so... It went awesome. Good, good, good. Yeah, that is awesome. Spice, are you streaming on the weekends? Do you stream every weekend, Spice? I noticed last weekend you were streaming and then I felt bad that I didn't stream. <clears throat> so. Spice is like the most consistent streamer that I think I know. Okay, very cool. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I don't know. I have a frog in my throat now. <clears> throat> oh, my, my mute is not working. No, it is working. Okay. Um, DC Calvit, thank you for the follow. Are you not going to tell him about your awesome OS? Is it awesome or is it a crime against Linux? Define awesome. Um, so, Spyus, today we are running on Arch, but it's Arch installed into, this, into an NTFS partition. So it's Arch mixed with Windows. So I have access to both all of my Arch files and all of my Windows files in the same partition. So I'm dual booting Windows and Linux, but 
on the same partition. So only one partition. I guess two partitions. One partition for EFI boots and one for the NTFS drive. So it's interesting to say the least. There's some bugs, but it mostly works. This is deep heresy. This is deep Linux heresy to do this. To force Linux to live in the Windows partition. There's a common saying, and everybody knows this. Okay. You don't shit where you eat, right? That's everybody knows this. And I feel like this I'm forcing Linux to be here where it shouldn't be. So I'm committing a crime against Linux here, but I really do like this. I really like this setup. My photographer side wants to come and poke at your lights, Boppy. Why? Do you not like the lights? Please post this on Reddit. See how see how the karma goes. I feel like I'd go negative karma. I feel like people would downvote this. They'd be like, this makes me uncomfortable. Um, yeah, Boppy is crazy. Yes. Um, well, okay, so here's the benefits. I want to talk about the benefits of this. Let's talk about the benefits of committing crimes against Linux. Um, you're, you have no wasted space. That's my main issue with dual booting Windows and Linux is I always feel like I use one more than I use the other. Every time I've dual booted, it's, it's either I completely use Linux and Windows is just wasted space or I end up mostly just using Windows and Linux is kind of just wasted space. In this setup, you can use both. No space is wasted. You don't, you're not using just half the disk. You're using the entire disk. Um, both of these operating systems uh, have full access to the entire partition. If they want to use more space, they can use more space. Um, the highlights are slightly blown, have adjustable light panels. I can adjust. Sorry, I bumped the I bumped the the, the music volume. Uh, I can adjust. It's not very. Let's see, I can I can turn it down. I can turn it down quite a bit. I can change the color so I can make it more blue. I didn't know you did for photography. That seems interesting. Oh, Let's see. How do I? Oh, that's off. Okay. Is that better? Hopefully that's better. Yeah, take it down. Don't make it blue. I know the blue is the blue is too much. Much better. Just delete Windows to save space. Very true. Um, but here's the issue. I feel like there are some times where I need full Windows. Like not. Um, you know, like I, I need to run Windows. I can't run things in Wine. I can't run it through Lutris. I can't run it through Play on Linux or, or Proton or, you know, um, it just won't work. So sometimes I do need access to full Windows. And that's what I've been using my laptop for, for the most part. Um, but again, like I said, this gives you the best of both, both worlds, except for there's a couple of bugs on the Linux end. But um, I think that's mostly fine to deal with. Okay, let's let's quickly finish this chapter. What do you guys say? Well, this looks like um, this looks like it's not going to be a quick chapter. Although there's a lot of code examples in here. Let me quick look. Okay, section seven four. So likely, yeah, we'll have to finish this section tomorrow. Um, but we can go ahead and just uh, finish this up, I guess. Let's do this, and then we'll we'll for I'll, I'll tell you what in in twenty minutes, in twenty minutes. We will try to run, we're going to try to run Microsoft Edge on Linux. We have Edge installed in our Windows, you know, wherever it is. We're going to try to run Microsoft Edge is what we're going to try to do. We'll try to run some Windows apps for like the last, um, you know, 30-ish minutes of the stream. So um, let's let's read through a little bit more of this and then we'll, we'll do some really nasty stuff towards the end of the stream. Okay. So in other hand, when bringing in structs, enums, and other items with use, it's idiomatic to specify the full path. Listing 714 shows the idiomatic way to bring the standard library's hash map struct into scope of the binary crate. So if you do standard collections hash map, then you can just do hash map. You do not need to specify the package. That is very cool. There's no strong reason um, behind this idiom. It's just the convention that has emerged and folks have gotten used to reading and writing code uh this way so you do typically when you do use you use a struct then so you have to say i'm using hash map so i can delete all this because this, this code is useless anyway we can do use std collections standard collections 
But if I didn't do hash maps, if I just wanted to do that, function main, let mutts mutes map is equal to, I guess here I would have to do collections hash map. But people don't do this apparently. So this is new. And we do map dot inserts one, two. This is a little annoying to be honest though, because then you have to insert, you have to do use on every collection you're gonna use. Function main is never used. Okay, interesting. So if you wanted to use a hash map and you wanted to use a list and you wanted to use some other structures too, um, then you would have to do a using statement for each one of those. So I guess the convention here is to do this instead, hash map like that. And then here, I do miss Vim. It's I can edit code so much faster in Vim. Not using your, like it, it, you know, it didn't really, I didn't really realize this until I really got into using Vim. The amount of time it takes for you to switch over to your mouse and do something, it's kind of a lot of time when you do it a lot. Uh, rename source lib rs to just source main rs if you want to run it. Okay. Um, oh, wait, sorry. Move source lib rs to source main rs. Of course, I spelled it wrong. Main R. Move source main dot rx to source main dot src. Sorry, source main rs. Okay. Then we do cargo run. Cool. Okay. So I ran. Very cool. Yeah, we're technically we were technically working on a library, but regardless, I wanted to run it to make sure that it runs. So that's good. Uh, okay, so the exception to the idiom is that if we're bringing two items with the same name into scope with use statements, because Rust doesn't allow that. Listing 715 shows how to bring two result types into scope that have the same name but different parent modules and how to refer to them. So here you would do use standard format, use standard IO. So results is an enum. Result is an enum. So for result types, you do not bring the entire thing into scope. You can have both main RS and, and lib RS file, but let's not poke at that yet. Okay. Yeah, I think we read it that earlier where you can have one library, um, but you, you can actually have multiple binaries in a project as well, which is interesting. Uh, makes sense. Oh yeah, sorry. In a module, I don't know, anyway. As you can see, uh, using the parent modules distinguishes the two result types. If instead we use uh, use standard format result and use standard IO results, we have two result types in the same scope and Rust wouldn't know which one we meant when we used result. So providing new names with the as keyword. So just as as. Okay, so per crate. Per crate, you can have one library and you can have as many binaries as you want. It sounds like. So providing new names with the as keyword, there's another solution to the problem of bringing two types of the same name into uh, same scope with use. After the pass, we can specify as and a new local name or alias for the type. So listing 716 shows another way to write the code in 715 by renaming one of the two result types using as. Um, I feel like I don't like that, but okay. Um, in the second use statement, we choose the name IO results for the standard IO results type, which doesn't conflict with the result from standard format that we've brought into scope. Listing 715 and less, uh, listing 716 are considered idiomatic, so the choice is up to you. So it depends on which code base you're working on. So this will depend on the coding conventions of the team that you're working with or yourself. If you're working with yourself, then you can choose yourself. When we bring a name into scope with the new with the use keyword, the name uh, the name available in the new scope is private. So to enable the code that calls our code to refer to the name as if it had been defined in that code scope, we need to combine pub and use. What? Uh, Duke window V window enter. Not for ghosts. Brownie points. Thank you. 
very much appreciate it. That's exactly what I wanted to do earlier. I just didn't know how to do it. So thank you for that. Okay. So. Um, okay, so this technique is called re-exporting because we're bringing an item into scope, but also making that item available for others to bring into their scope. Okay, hold on. I feel like I have to reread this. This sounds really complicated. So let's see. When we bring a name into scope with the use keyword, the name available in the new scope is private. So it's only within that module. Okay. To enable the code that... Oh, the code that calls our code. To refer to that name as if it had been defined the code scope, we can combine pub and use. So if you do use on a crate... All right, I guess if you do use on a module that also has a public use, does that also bring that use also into your scope? I guess we'll see here. So we can type this one out. So this is like, oops. This is like if your code touches something or like uses a library, a private library that has some enums or structs in it that you need to for your code to function. But those need to be used as parameters or something to your function calls and then your library is used by another executable then basically what you have there is a situation where i believe the executable would not be able to see the types that you're using so i'm assuming that it's just gonna bring basically bring the types with during the import but we'll see here so again this is a library it's a mod front of so we have fronts of house if i can type we have pubmod hosting pub function add to waitlist. Okay. Then we do pub use crates fronts of house hosting. Okay. Then we have pub function. I guess here we can just do, I guess let's just do main here. Pub main. I think actually I can just do that. Hosting add to wait list. I don't know why uh, we call three times, but I guess we do that. So we're going to do cargo build. Okay. So by using pub use external code can now call add to waitlist function using a hosting add to waitlist if we hadn't specified pub use after the eat at restaurant function um let's see if we hadn't specified pub use the eat at restaurant function could call hosting add to waitlist in its scope but the external code couldn't take advantage of this new path okay i'm not really i'm not really understanding this to be honest the re-exporting thing seems uh, a little strange to me. Re-exporting is useful when the internal structure of your code is different from how programmers calling your code would think about it in the domain. For example, in this restaurant metaphor, the people running the restaurant think about front of house, back of house, but customers visiting a restaurant probably won't think about parts of the restaurant in those terms. With pub use, we can write our code with one structure, but expose a different structure. By uh, doing so, it makes our library well organized for programmers working on the library and programmers calling the library. Okay, so it's an organizational thing. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how this differs or what exactly this does. Because the hosting module is already pub. I guess I, I don't know what this does. If anybody wants to give me maybe a short description in chat what they think this does, please let me know because I honestly don't know. Okay, using external packages, uh, let's try to wrap. Okay, so let's let's uh, we still want to go do the um, the crimes against Linux towards the end of the stream here, so we will do that. So using external packages, um, I think we already brushed on this. I'll read it quickly. In chapter two, we programmed a guessing game project that used an external package called rand to get random numbers. To use rand in our project, we added this line to cargo.toml. So file name, cargo.toml. We selected rand is equal to 8.3. So the version of the rand package that we were requesting was 8.3. But then we also had the issues where it doesn't get the actual version that you say, unless you do the equals, it will just get the newest patch version. So it could do 084 if it wants. 
Adding Rand as a dependency in our Cargo Tom will tell Cargo, Cargo to download the Rand package and any dependencies from crates.io and make Rand available on your project. Then, to bring Rand definitions into the scope of our package, we added a use line starting with the name of the crate, Rand, and listed the items we want to bring into scope. Recall that in generating a random number section in Chapter 2, we bought the Rand trade in scope and called the Rand thread RNG function. Members of the Rust community have made many packages available at crates.io, and pulling any of them into your package involves the same sets, steps, listing them in your package's cargo.toml file, and using use to bring items from their crates into scope, so we had already done this before. Hello, Sphere, welcome in. How you doing, pal? I am doing great today. I am very tired, but I'm, I'm doing great. Note that the standard library is also a crate that's external to our package. Because the standard library is shipped with the Rust language, we don't need to change cargo.toml to include uh, standard STD, uh, but we need to refer to it using using uh, to bring items from their package from uh, their package into our package's scope. For example, with HashMap, we would use this line, use STD collections, um hash map this is an absolute path starting with um std the name of the standard library crates okay uh basically one more section here and then we will try to do some really weird stuff hydrates cowface dude welcome in hope you're doing well welcome back like i said i want to save some time at the end of the stream to try to launch edge we will launch edge on linux If it'll allow us to, I don't, I don't, I don't actually know if it'll allow us to do it, but we can try it. If we're using multiple items defined in the same crate or same module, listing each item on its own line can take up a lot of vertical space in our file. So, for example, these two use statements we had in the guessing game and listing two four brings items from uh, STD into scope. So it brings in STD compare ordering and STD IO. Okay. Instead, we can use nested paths to bring the same items into scope in one line. Oh boy, I don't know if I like that. So you can do use std colon, then open squiggly cmp double um, double colon ordering, and then also comma io. That is substantially less readable, in my opinion. I remember we had this issue in Java as well. Java had this issue. Um, and I remember in Java, like if I do vim file.java, I think I can actually do like public class. Yeah, it'll do it. So public class, my class. Okay. So this is, if this was Java, okay. If we remembered how to use Java in Java, you can do like import Java X dot swing. Um, but then like, for example, it may be, um, or sorry, is it Java X? It's something X. Um, so, but then there was also like Java. So import Java dot AWT, um, dot windowing. There was like AWT dot buttons or something. There was AWT dot like dot panel or whatever. Unfortunately, what this forced people to do is to do, um, this instead, which is kind of like really bad. Um, you do star here to import basically everything. And basically what that happens is that you have a whole a whole crap ton of stuff in your namespace that you don't need. So then like, for example, if you're programming in Eclipse, um, you'll go to like be like button and then there'll be like, like a gazillion options for buttons because you're importing literally every button or whatever within AWT, whatever. Um, so there's some problems with doing that and I can understand why in Rust that's kind of not supposed to be used. So it's, it's in other languages as well. I use my use statements to express my personality and creativity. <laughs> uh, very interesting, Ray Marsh. Star imports in Rust isn't ideal. Yeah, de definitely I can see why it's not good because I've experienced that as well. So in bigger programs, bringing, uh, bringing many items into scope from the same crate or module using nested paths can reduce the number of use statements needed by a lot. We can use a nested path at any level in a path, which is just useful when combining two 